we dive into sex abuse scandals happening in Russia, Canada, and in the United States, and how they, each country's governments are reacting differently to the uh, potential abuse of minors happening. This is your March 23rd Not So News Update. Please like and subscribe if you're looking for daily news content. Dive on it. Starting us off from the AP News, Russia threatens to block Twitter in a month. Uh, coming, Russian authorities said Tuesday they would block Twitter in a month if it doesn't step to remove banned content, a move that escalates the Russian government's drawn-out standoff with social media platforms that have played a major role in amplifying dissent in Russia. Russia's state communications watchdog, uh, I'm going to butcher it, Roskomnadzor, uh, last week announced it was slowing down the speed of uploading photos and videos to Twitter over its alleged failure to remove content encouraging suicide among children and information about drugs and child pornography. The agency t said Twitter has failed to remove more than 3,000 posts with banned content, including more than 2,500 posts encouraging suicide among minors. The platform responded by emphasizing its policy for zero tolerance for child sexual exploitation, promotion of suicides, and drug sales. Um, I want to first start by just noting how the article says that this is dissent in Russia. We need to make sure when we're ever talking about the abuse of uh, child and ch uh, child sex trafficking that we need to make sure that uh, comes off as a good thing to be against it. Uh, saying that this is just dissent in Russia all, all of this makes us sound that like we're rooting for the uh, the uh, people against the Russian government. Um, however, looking at this, I'm, I'm rather encouraged. Um, in the United States, we don't have the greatest view of Russia, and it's good to know that they at least have some moral standards here. Um, coming out of Canada this day, uh, this week, um, coming from the Toronto Sun, Sunday marks the widely criticized site birthday, but it's lemons and coal, uh, coals from the Canadian Center for Child Protection. Uh, this birthday is referring to Twitter, who's celebrating its 15th uh, anniversary. The group portrays Twitter as a wild west of sickening child sex abuse images, and survivors are calling out the social media giant for its woeful lack of action around the material. Now C3P has launched a powerful public service campaign to get Twitter to remove the vile images from the platform. According to 2020 data reported by Twitter to NCMEC, there has been a 41% increase in reports of child sexual abuse images in just one year. Twitter has declined help from the group in finding the images and ditching them. They characterize Twitter's practices as poor. Survivors of child pornography often spend thousands of hours trying to scrub abusive images of themselves. Instead of help, they allegedly get pushed back. I think something that we've often been too uh, com comfortable with in Twitter is these abuses that happen on the platform. Um, specifically, when we uh, looked at how Parler was treated after the January 6th uh, riots at the Capitol, they were taken down almost immediately by Amazon Web Services, and it makes you wonder why Amazon Web Services sponsors Twitter's um, and Twitter's handling of these types of abuses. Additionally, we need to look at why the United States has not had an equivalent response on these types of issues. These two... Um, uh, resources coming from the uh, uh, Canadian government and the Russian government are towards the head. And if you look at the Biden uh, presidency, there's been no call for uh, of action regarding um, the issue of child pornography on Twitter. So, however, in this last week, we did see new calls on how sex work should be treated. Um, in response to the Atlanta killing, we see sex worker advocates sees deadly consequences of overlapping hatred. This comes from NPR. The man accused of killing six Asian women told police he attacked the Georgia massage businesses because they contributed to his sex addiction. The spas, police said, were a source of temptation for him that he wanted to eliminate. Although authorities had not said whether sex work occurred at the businesses, the spas he targeted were reported sites of law enforcement, prostitution sings, and reviewed online as places where sex work occurred. Regardless of your feelings on whether sex work should be made legalized or not, we need to admit that there's a problem when the only way someone feels any sense of intimacy is if they have to pay for it. We see similar things when someone has the power to lay their hands on a child, and that's why we see such a prevalent use of child pornography specifically on the Twitter's platform. We need to question why this is happening specifically in the United States, why the United States cannot target it like we've targeted other countries for their human rights abuses, um, specifically if we look at China and its treatment of the Uyghur population. Um, that's another thing, though, however, we haven't seen clear um, condemnation coming from the 
current uh, presidency. If you remember during the um, town hall he recently did, he said that the Uyghur uh, concentration camps were just a cultural norm in China. And this type of language is something we need to thoroughly condemn. Human rights abuses, regardless of it, it's based on you know the race, the gender, the sex, or the age, is a human rights abuse, and we need to treat it um, as an important issue. Now, we need to look at a, another issue that, of human rights that's happening in the United States that's related to the same sex abuse scandals. Um, scoop, inside a crowded border patrol in Donna, Texas. This is coming from Axios. If you remember, the reason why we have such an issue going on at the crisis or crisis at the border right now is because that there's been essentially um, a policy of allowing the migrants to come in, and we need to vet the um, minors from their parents. We've seen over a 700% increase and there's over 700% overflow in these sites. If you see uh, in the following overflow facility, they are not doing their proper social distancing by uh, COVID measures. They're right next to each other. They're put in these plastic uh, tents and they're, you know, crammed in there. I see, you know, roughly 20 to 30 individuals in what looks like to be maybe a couple hundred square foot uh, cube. Um, if you continued into the article, we need to ask why it, it matters. The Biden administration has restri restricted media coverage at these housing facilities. Images like the ones um, just shown offer a rare window into the conditions. What we need to know is why the Biden administration is not allowing us to see what's going on in these um, housing facilities. Part of what we're trying to do here is prevent the issue of human trafficking going on if we're not doing a check here for checking if um people are actually coming in with their parents they could be coming in from potential human traffickers um what we do have come from the uh, biden administration is border patrol agents are doing the best they can under the circumstances but are not equipped to care for the kids and need some help from the administration. We have to stop kids and families from making the dangerous trek across Mexico to come to the United States. We have to work with Mexico and Central American countries to have them apply for asylum in their countries. Now, in the article, they continue to say that part of this issue is how Trump left it. And something we do need to note here is that we do have you know particular laws when it comes to immigrating and not into the country and we need to make sure we're enforcing those laws. If we do wanna have a policy that allows uh, individuals that come here um, that are seeking asylum, we need to have the standards set up that we're treating them in a humane manner. We should not be cramming them into these um, cubes regardless of how friendly and open we want to be. This is just as bad as the kids in cages, and as far as I'm concerned, it's potentially worse, specifically in the times of COVID. Now, what we need to also look at is what's something that they do care about in the Biden administration. What we had reported this week is the Biden White House is firing staffers for marijuana use. That's a mistake coming from MSNBC. What we need to also remember is that Kamala Harris went on live radio stating that she smoked marijuana while in college while uh, listening to, I believe it was Tupac. <laughs> um, Coming in the um, report, on Friday, White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki semi-confirmed the report saying on Twitter, the bottom line is this, of the hundreds of people hired, only five people who had started working at the White House are no longer employed as a result of this policy. Um, now, yes, the fact is that marijuana is totally illegal on federal level, just not in the federal city, but the policy still has reportedly affected staffers whose marijuana use was exclusive to places where it is legal. It's a continuation of a trend across the federal government as more states have legalized in which hitting the blunt while holding a clearance is grounds to have it revoked. So what's the defense for this policy? Well, last month, the White House officials said the revised guidelines would effectively protect our national security while modernizing policies to ensure that talented and otherwise well-qualified applicants with limited marijuana um, use will not be barred from serving the America problem. But there's one problem with that explanation. It makes no sense. I have yet to see a valid reason that would say that keeping people who smoke any amount of marijuana out of the federal government is a net positive for national security. I think what we need to do as a, a population, as the citizens of the United States, is say we don't care about drug use, um, at least specifically looking at marijuana. You know, there might be a conversation about harder drugs. Um, but, you know, move this to the states. And you know where I do want to see our federal government working if they're going to do anything is stopping the abuse of minors on platforms like Twitter. Start condemning them like in the same way that there was a call for Pornhub to take down millions of videos as a result of them having guidelines that did not protect protect minors. Sorry.
We need to have similar um, actions being done against uh, organizations like Twitter to make them realize that this is an issue. We need to start coming for the big media to make it a threat on their population. We need to make sure they understand that human lives matter. And this is your March 23rd Nazi News Update. Once again, please like and subscribe if you're looking for daily news content, and have a good one.